Here we're going to look at a solution to problem A2 from the 2009 Putnam exam. So let's look at the statement. So we want to suppose that f, g, and h are differentiable functions on an open interval containing 0, and then consider this system of differential equations. So we have f prime equals 2 f squared g h plus 1 over g h. And then we've got this initial condition that f evaluated at 0 is 1. Then we have g prime equals f g squared h plus 4 over f h where the initial condition is g of 0 equals 1. And then we've got h prime equals 3 f g h squared plus 1 over f g where again we've got h evaluated at 0 is 1. And the goal is to solve for f of x near x equals 0. Okay, so let's maybe look at some hints before we dive into the solution. Okay, so the first hint is to symmetrize this into a single differential equation. So there are actually some clues built into the statement of the problem that tell us that we can be that we are able to do that. First of all, these coefficients here, 2 plus 1 plus 3 is equal to 6. And these coefficients here, 1 plus 4 plus 1 is also equal to 6. So it looks like if we manipulate these differential equations and then take a sum, we can get two things that have a coefficient of 6. So maybe that's kind of a nice hint to see. Um, the next thing is to recall the product rule. So I won't say so much about this, but it's the product rule for a product of three functions. And then the next hint is that systems of nonlinear differential equations are very difficult to solve. Except for a few special cases, it's essentially impossible to solve a system of nonlinear differential equations. And since here we do have a system of nonlinear differential equations, that means that we should expect a fairly simple solution. Um, because there are really only examples of these things where there are simple solutions in the first place. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean this up and then we'll get to look at the solution. Now we're ready to look at a solution. So we're gonna start off with this thing that we said in the hint portion, and that is this product rule for a product of three functions, and that's f times g times h prime. In other words, the derivative of that product, f times g times h, is gonna be f prime g h plus f g prime h plus f g h prime, and that's easy to see just by applying the product rule twice. Okay, now what we want to do is notice that we can get an object that looks like this out of this system of equations if we multiply this first equation by g times h. Notice that'll create this first term. We'll multiply this second equation by f times h. That'll that'll create this second term. And then we'll multiply this third equation by f times g. That'll create this third term. And also, it'll serve to clear these denominators here. So let's go ahead and kind of spell that out. So we want to multiply equation 1 by g times h, equation 2 by f times h, and then equation 3 by f times g. Great, so let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us f prime g h equals 2 f g h quantity squared, so that's important to see, plus 1. Good. So not only did we create something that looks like these portions of this product rule on the left-hand side of this equation, but we also kind of shored this up to a whole thing squared, so that's important to see and we cancel this denominator here. So now let's keep going and see what we get for the rest of it. So we have f g prime h, so that's gonna be f g h squared plus four, so that's what we get for this second equation. And this for this third equation, we get f g h prime equals three f g h squared plus one. Okay. So now the next thing that I want to do is take a sum of these equations. Notice if we sum the left-hand side, we get exactly the right-hand side of this equation. So in other words, we get FGH quantity prime. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll take the sum of these and we'll get FGH quantity prime equals, but now we've got like terms over here. We have three plus one plus two, so that's going to be six f g h squared plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 is also 6. So notice that's a nice format that we have now. 
Now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit by setting y equal to f g h. And that's going to allow us to write this as y prime equals uh, 6 times the quantity y squared plus 1. Okay, great. Now we can actually solve this differential equation uh, fairly easily. So um, let's do that in the remaining portion of the board. So we can do this by the technique which is known as separation of variables. So what I'll do is I'll write this as y prime over y squared plus 1 equals 6. And then from there, I'll take both sides and I'll integrate with respect to x, keeping in mind that this function y, which is defined as f times g times h, is a function of x. So here, it's like a substitution has already been made. And so we can reverse the chain rule here, and that is going to give us the inverse tan, so in other words, the arctan of y on the left-hand side. And let's just check that real quick. If we take the derivative of this, we get 1 over y squared plus 1 times the derivative of the inside function, which will be y prime, so we're good to go there. Then if we take the antiderivative on this right-hand side, we're going to get 6x plus some constant c. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop on this board. I'll bring this to the top and we'll move on to the next step. On the last board, we worked to the following point. So we set y equal to this product, f times g times h. That created a single differential equation with an initial condition that was y evaluated at 0 equals 1. So we didn't point that out on the last board, that, but that's actually pretty easy to see because f evaluated at 0, g evaluated at 0, and h evaluated at 0 are all 1. So in other words, clearly we have y evaluated at 0 is 1. And then we solved this to this point, and we got that the inverse tangent of y equals 6x plus c. But notice that is going to tell us that y is equal to the tangent of 6x plus this constant. And now we can go ahead and use our initial condition. So if we plug in x equals 0 here, on the one hand, that's going to give us the tangent of c. And then on the other hand, that's going to give us 1. Now, since we're in a neighborhood that is close to zero, we want to look for a number c so that when we evaluate it with the tangent function, we get one and that number is close to zero. And that's pretty easy to see. That will be pi over four. So I'll just go ahead and note that right here. We have c equals pi fourths. So in other words, we have our function y equals tangent of 6x plus pi over 4. Okay, great. So now what we want to do is recognize that we want the solution for the function f, not the solution for this product f times g times h. And now let's recall that this was really equal to the product of the functions f times g times h. And that's actually what we're going to use in order to solve for f at the end. So we want to look for these three equations and somehow use one of them to solve for f using the fact that we know f times g times h equals this tangent thing. And notice the first function is going to maybe be the most helpful. If we divide that entire first equation by f, notice we'll get the following. So we're going to take this entire equation, divide it by f. That'll give us f prime over f equals... So if we divide this by f, we'll have uh, 2fgh. Well, that's actually quite nice because we know what fgh is. And then if we divide this thing by f, we're going to have plus 1 over fgh. And that's also good because we know what fgh is. So here we can say that this is equal to 2 tangent of 6x plus pi quarters. And then now we have plus... 1 over the tangent, but 1 over tangent is cotangent. So we're going to go ahead and get cotangent of 6x plus pi over 4. Okay, so now let's look at this extreme left and right hand side of this equation. And now we have um, a first order differential equation that is already separated using this technique of separation of variables for the function f. So all we need to do from here is take the antiderivative of both sides with respect to x. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we take the antiderivative of the left-hand side with respect to x, we're going to get the natural log of f of x. So that's pretty easy to see because if you take the derivative of this by the chain rule, the 
F goes to the downstairs, and then we get F prime upstairs. The next thing that we want to notice is we know that tangent is equal to sine of this stuff over cosine of this stuff, and cotangent is equal to cosine of this stuff over sine of all of this stuff. And that sets up a really nice U substitution that we could do for both of those antiderivatives. I won't go through all of the details with that. We'll just skip to the antiderivative being taken. So that's gonna give us minus two over six times the natural log of cosine of six X plus pi over four. So that's the first term. Let's go ahead and check that real quick. So taking the derivative of natural log is gonna send cosine downstairs, and then we get sine upstairs, but it's a minus sign because remember the derivative of cosine is minus sign, so that's how we picked up this extra minus. And then since we have a coefficient of six here, we have to divide by that coefficient of six. All right, great. And then here we're gonna get something pretty similar, but we'll get the natural log of sine of six X plus pi over four, and then we have a coefficient of one over six in that case as well. And then again, we've got this constant of integration. Now the next thing that I wanna do is apply some natural log rules. So I can factor a one sixth out of this whole thing, and that's gonna give me the natural log of sine of six X plus pi over four over cosine squared six X plus pi over four and then that's again plus our constant C, which is different than the constant C that we had up here, but we'll just reuse that notation. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is bring this to the top and then we'll finish it off. All right, on the last board, we got to this following point. We don't quite have our function f of x yet, but we do have the natural log of our function f of x by solving a differential equation that we had constructed. And that is this natural log of f of x is 1 sixth and then the natural log of sine of six X plus pi over four over cosine squared of the same thing and then plus a constant. Now the next thing that we wanna do is exponentiate both sides and that's gonna give us F of X equals, and so notice we're going to have E to the natural log of all of this stuff and then that is all raised to the one sixth power so that's just using exponent rules. And I don't wanna rewrite all of that stuff, but what all of this is is exactly that. And then we'll have that as multiplied by e to this constant. And again, here we're just using exponent rules in a fairly elementary way. Now the next thing that we wanna do is that the exponential and the logarithm will cancel each other out. And that's just going to give us e to this constant. And I'll just rename that a capital C. And so this is like something fairly typical when you're solving differential equations. Since at the moment this is an arbitrary constant, we'll just rename it. Um, and then we will have the sixth root of this sine of six X plus pi over four over cosine squared of six X plus pi over four. Okay, so that's what we have for F of X. Now we're almost done. The one thing, thing that we need to figure out is what this constant is. But luckily, we have this initial condition. We know f evaluated at zero is equal to one. So let's see what we get for that. So if we go ahead and plug in x equals zero here, we're gonna, on the one hand, get this constant and then times the sixth root of. So we know sine of pi over four is one over root two. So we have one over root two, that's from the sine of pi over four, because notice if we set x equal to zero, this six times zero goes away. And then cosine of pi over four is also one over root two, but we're squaring that. So we're gonna get a half from that. Okay, so, but notice all of the stuff in the middle will cancel down to two over root two, which is the same thing as root two. So in fact, what we have is uh, the sixth root of the square root of two, but that's exactly equal to this constant times the 12th root of two. And then again, from this initial condition, we know that that's equal to one. So in other words, we know that this constant is equal to uh, one over the 12th root of two. So there we've found our constant and that was the last piece of the puzzle for knowing what this function is. So this function is the one over the 12th root of two 
times the sixth root of sine of 6x plus pi over 4 over cosine squared of 6x plus pi over 4. Great. And that is the final answer for this problem and a good place to stop this video.